It's Louisa Shaw here with Future Previews, and I am here with Jamie Kennedy. Thank you for talking to me today. I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. How are you, can I ask? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> so hot in LA, right? I know. So I want to ask what you've been up to. I know you've been working on a movie called Roe v. Wade. Yeah. I want to ask you about your role, how it's been. We've been hearing so many issues with set, people leaving, staying. Mm -hmm. So tell us, please. Uh, Roe v. Wade is a, a movie about um, the decision of Roe v. Wade in 1973 that made abortion legal. And there's a lot of behind the scenes and the machinations of uh, a lot of details that went on that, you know, I think some people know, some people may not know. I play Larry Later, who oh, is, Larry Later is her kind of number one protege. And Larry basically, um, he was one of the, not founders of Planned Parenthood, but he was one of the founders. He was, but he was more of a guy that wanted to push abortion to become legal. And um, there's just, still, I don't, I have, I have just so many facts about it, so I want to make sure I say the correct things. Um, but... Uh, he was Harvard educated, he, uh, he was an author, um, and the movie is uh, controversial. It how will be controversial. How did you feel taking on the role? Did you feel like you might get backlash from fans, or you might be judged, or for you it's like, I'm going in as an actor, that's it? Going in as an actor, that's it, but... Um, Today, Hollywood is so, well, the world, America is so divided, and Hollywood is very divided. So there's already people actively hating on the movie. Mm -hmm. um, Budget-wise, are they not funding it, or theaters don't want to pick it up? No, it, it's, it has distribution. Okay. It's probably going to come out in 2019. Is it hard to get funded because of Hollywood? Does Hollywood not want to give it the green light? We've also read some articles that a few actors quit on set. And yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of misinformation about the about the movie. There was something about Kevin Sorbo and mm -hmm. Stephen Baldwin quitting. That never happened. Their schedules never worked out. Uh, we have a cast of about there's 70 people or 72 people in the cast. We have about 20 people that you would recognize. John Voigt. John Voigt, Steve Gertenberg, John Schneider, Corbin Bernson, Stacey, Stacey Dash. Dash, Joey Lawrence, okay. um, Tom Gearney, Small, he's, he's okay. killing me Smalls, and okay. like, t there's a million people. Do you want audiences to take away from it, a regular fan? Do you basically want them to get educated on both sides before making a decision? I don't want anything. Yeah. I don't have such a hard topic. Well, I don't have a dog in this fight, but I do, but I, because I, it's, it's, my responsibility as a, as a man has to be, if I'm going to have sex with a woman, I should be very prepared, right? That's how I feel. Mm -hmm. So, if I'm going to have sex with a woman and it's casual sex, mm -hmm. I should wear a condom. Yeah. I should take the right precautions. And if I don't and something happens, you know, and hopefully people can make an informed choice. Um, yeah. I think good art questions things. Good, you know, movies. That's like the it's, power of art, right? It makes us think. Yeah, I mean, like, like a TV show or a good movie or a good album should push the conversation. And it is, what this is going to do is get right in the middle of the conversation. Well, thank you for sharing that because I know it's such a controversial topic. But now on to some lighter stories. I really We're over like that? <laughs> that? The top that was barely going into it. <laughs> I want to talk about Malibu's Most Wanted. Okay. Like your 15th anniversary, 15th. Yes. And how you feel making that movie? You've grown so much as an actor. Do you and the cast ever hang out? Or is it a huge accomplishment for you? Because I feel like we're sitting in a room full of your resume here. Mm. Can we please applaud? Like how amazing is this? And we're going to talk about Lost and Found because I'm Armenian, so I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> but um, tell me about Malibu's. How do you feel about that? 
Uh, it's one of my babies. I yeah. mean, you know, it was a character that I started doing on stage when I was doing stand-up, and it's, you know, something that people probably say, recognize me for every day, you know, and, and they always say, what's up, B-Red, and they, you know, they, they love the movie, and I was very fortunate enough to get the movie made, and, um, what can I say, I love, the, I love it, I mean, it's, it still feels like it's yesterday, 15 years, I know it seems like a long time, but it's mm -hmm. not, because the movie's on TV all the time, it's kind of still relevant, there's a lot of things that are happening that became... Mm -hmm. Be rad ass. And I think a lot of our generation, because you know, I grew up in the 90s, I'm a millennial, and we grew up on that. And you talk a lot about being real and authentic in your podcast, too, by the way. I have mm -hmm. to say, his podcast is so hilarious, especially the tampon episode when you talk about that. It's like one of your old ones from last year. Yes, you, you listen to it. <laughs> You talk about women and how sometimes they're not that mysterious anymore and all of that. How do you feel with social media? Is it is everything so exposed now? Because you go in in that, in that podcast. You talk about Hollywood and that's your platform to conversate everyone. How did that come about? Uh, I think the podcast is, is something that I really want to show another side of myself. So I really was, you know, wanting to voice something that people didn't know me from, like show the experiment or be read, and and um, that particular episode that was, so funny. was. See, well, you think it's funny? I'm glad you do because some people really are mad at it's it. It's really but, raw. You have to know. You go in knowing that you have but, no filter. Well, no. The what the podcast <laughs> basically says is is that this woman went to yoga class and she's wearing white sweatpants and she was ending um or starting her menstrual cycle so she got a dot yeah and her whole thing was that she didn't want to apologize that she got a dot which i totally agree with you you get a period right but the fact that and then she wanted all this stuff about how it's you know getting a period and all this stuff which Again, I cannot comment on, I'm not a woman, I, I don't get the period. But then it goes into the conversation about how this other woman was in a, a marathon and she didn't wear a tampon and she was bleeding down her leg. Right. So at some point, is, there's a health issue here. I mean, like, okay, like, I don't... <laughs> It's like my that's whole... The, that's the best thing about your podcast. You let it out. That's your well, yeah. Like I'm, I'm saying is yeah, you, like no one is shaming you to having a period, but yeah. don't be surprised if you wear white sweatpants to yoga and you get your period and people go, oh, shit. She got her period. I mean, just like, and that's why I said, like, if I ate a bunch of potato chips and I'm wearing sweatpants and I'm at Whole Foods and I shart, I expect people to look. I mean, that's... Like, common courtesy. I get it. No, like, no, no. We're in a world right now where people are... Transparent? No, they're not. They lie, but they're being busted because of, because of the internet. There's lies are going to go away. No more lying through social media. No, because you're going to see everything. But what I'm saying is we live in a world where people... It's changing rapidly, and it should, right? We have new groups, new genders, new... You know, boxes are changing. People will not want to be in boxes. And my whole thing is, I, that's great. You know, gender fluid, gender binary, transgender, pansexual, all these different things that are happening. My feeling is fantastic. But don't be surprised if I, like, ask a couple questions because some of this stuff I'm just learning about. Right. And I think that's where people sometimes get offended. And it's just like, yo, some of it's new. Like, my sister walked into a bathroom the other day with her nine-year-old daughter and a guy comes out with a beard <gasps> in, the in the women's room. Now you're doing that face. And she goes, I'm sorry, the men's room is over there. And he goes, don't police my gender. 100%, 100%. And so and she's like, I'm sorry. So the guy was like, yo, I feel like I'm a woman, whatever. And in California, I think there's a new law that says that you can go in any bathroom. I'm pretty sure that did all bathrooms are gender neutral now. A lot of parents were concerned about that too, with their children going to bathrooms like that and all of that. But I just think that's just the world we live in right now. And it is, and it should be. And yeah. no one should be 
on the fringes. We all should be accepting and opening. But sometimes if you question it, yeah. it's like, it's like, you know, somebody wants to, like, I don't know. Yeah. I can't even make a joke because some people get so upset. But you know what I'm saying. But also you're a comedian. I think you have that right to kind of have that no filter. And you also talk about Hollywood being all about money in, the, in your podcast. One of your episodes, you said something like, if you're, if the movie title can't be put on an eraser, they're not going to make it, right? So the accountants and all that. So for us creatives, for people who want to pitch stories and have these ideas, what should we do? It's, it's scary, right? Because you even say you have all these ideas that maybe can't get picked up because of that. Oh. I'm going in. <laughs> Hollywood's going to change. It's changing now. Um, and it's, and it's, and it's and it's it, it's good you know it, it it's gonna be completely transformed and i think a lot of people are going to be wiped out and i think there's a new generation that's coming in mm -hmm. and i think there's going to be tons of new types of stories um and i think that the structure of how do we have to understand is based on one thing money it's a commerce business now yeah there's there is there a creativeness in there yes people have make great movies yes but it's very there's a reason why you see remakes and sequels and stuff because they make money I'm also scared of doing original stuff probably right i mean yes and no i mean there's there's certain people that are making really original amazing movies you have to see the movie hereditary mm -hmm. it's incredible and it and it's completely turns the horror genre upside down it's like trans sends it and so there's people like that but it's made by i believe it was blumhouse i think it was and you know he gets to to make certain movies because he had he has proved himself um i think tv is probably the golden spot of where you can try uh, newer things but i mean it's changing it's not so much movie anymore as most of content but i still love movies and I went to this beautiful movie theater in uh the other day in um it, in Hollywood. No, where was I? It was it was Mission Impossible. Okay, I still have to see it, don't judge me. It's so good. The the movie hit on all levels and I thought the you know, you'll tell me if I'm wrong, I thought the women characters were strong and sexy. I thought the main characters were strong. I think everyone's roles were defined. I felt they were a team. Nice. Um, it's nonstop action. So that to me was what a movie should be. It was big. It was exciting. Tom Cruise does every right. <laughs> he's, he's He's totally made himself unreplaceable because I understand why. Because he does every stunt because no one can do it like him. Um, he's going to be running until he's 95. And so that to me is a movie, and that's how I think movies are going to be, like that. Sure, there'll be little movies that are great, you know, that, you know, like Lady Bird, which is a big oh, hit. A yeah, it's a great movie, and it's not as big, and they'll still play, but I think probably, you know, it'll be a mix of TV and, oh, yeah. of, and those type of stories, but the big blockbusters will probably be what the movies will survive Sounds on. Sounds like you want to direct one day. You have visions like that, or maybe even be an action thriller? Um, people ask me if I want to direct. I probably should because... You have a lot to say. Yeah, but I'm really... It's, it's funny because I think I would probably be... My patience is like... Mm. And, it's, and it's like something I have to work on. And this is a weird thing, but I've been taking CBD. And I'm telling you, God, it makes me more patient. I swear to God. CBD? It's amazing. What you'll, is that? You'll, it's the oil... Oh, and marijuana oil with oil. without the marijuana. You just rub it on you? No, you put it in your coffee. Really? Yeah, I'm telling you, so God. It's I slept but, like a baby. I woke up early today. But does it give you clarity and focus? Or? Totally. Really? Unbelievable, I'm not kidding you. I feel like and I don't even think you should drink as much. Like I drank, I did a test where I drank one night and the next night I did C B D and the night I drank, I felt like shit. Wow. The day I did C B D I was productive. Good for you. But I don't know, that goes back to what we were talking about. Oh, directing. So, um, 
I see things, you know, because I've yeah. been in over a hundred movies, and you know, some huge, some small, some great, some not, and I see where things can be very quickly. You can move and get stuff done, and there's a lot of waste in in our business, and there's a lot of overthinking, and. Um, if I probably directed, I would direct something that would be actor heavy because, right. or comedy heavy because that's what I know. I don't know special effects and all that stuff. I would need a lot of help for that. Okay, well I want to talk about a Lost and Found in Armenia. Okay. So how did that come about? Because everyone in Glendale loves that movie. Every Armenian loves that movie. <laughs> My family's so excited that I'm sitting here talking to you. Are you from Armenia? I mean, uh, Glendale? I, I'm born in Glendale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, my parents are from Armenia. And we're just big fans of even the director, uh, Gore. Gore, yeah. So tell us about that. How did that come about? Um, it was Steve, the guy you met earlier, yeah. was my agent. And um, I had a meeting and they made me an offer. And um, I liked the script. Mm -hmm. And it was literally like lost and found in Armenia. And I thought, what's this about? And then I was like, it's literally about a guy. It's like in a totally different culture. Mm -hmm. um, I really liked Gore, I really like him. Mm -hmm. He's a really good director. Um, his brother's a dancer. Yeah, yeah his, brother's a great, his yeah. brother's a great dancer, a choreographer. Spears, all that. All that. Yeah. yeah, he's got an interesting family. I mean, Gore is a great director, writer, and his brother's a great choreographer. Yeah. And um, I just thought this movie could work, and I thought, if it doesn't break out in the Hollywood, it will be my could be my Greek wedding, you know, totally. or it could be. And the Armenian fans that come along with it. Totally agree. Like, including me. Um, <laughs> and so the movie, you know, did well in in your community. <laughs> in Glendale. Yeah, it did oh, well no, in the eight one eight, off the two, <laughs> the two freeway. But uh, and Not the and Fresno, it did well. Okay. That's maybe, Armenian guys. Maybe even Boston. Maybe some people in Boston. York. So it didn't really break, you know, out in the other <laughs> consciousness. But I can't go to certain, you know, falafel places. I can't go on the halal guys oh, oh, without yes. getting some free, you know. For carousel. I love yeah. yes carousel. I get some free hummus. Zanku chicken. Yeah, oh, Zanku. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but I loved it, and uh, I was in Armenia for six weeks. I have a few Instagram questions. Yeah, go for a it. A few people have DM me that they want me to ask. DM. Yeah, right. Easiest yeah, way to right. say hi now. Yes. Ray Sean said, I love I love that movie, Malibu's uh, Most Wanted. And he said, ask him if he has a GameCube or a Dreamcast. That's not my part. It sounds <laughs> like what is that? I got to PS3. PS3. <laughs> GameCube is older now. Okay. But I had uh, both. Okay. I just know Nintendo and Mario. Mm. <laughs> That's about it. And then my uh, other friend, Froy, said, what are his biggest inspirations and what projects does he have coming along? So kind of talk about projects. Uh, I got the Roe vs. Wade movie. I've got a part in Brad Pitt's new movie. Yes! Um, Ad, Ad Astra. Astra. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Perfect way segment in. <laughs> I can't say too much about it. Give us a little. How was Brad? Um, have you seen him yet? Well, I'm just going to keep it on the deal, but I'm going to say that uh, I was very, 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 very fortunate to be in this movie. Um, I, it's it's going to be... Well, you play a sergeant, can we say that? Yeah, I okay. play a sergeant, and, okay. and it's Brad Pitt, and, um, you know, and he goes on a mission in space, and I think who better to represent the human race than BP, right? Yep. It's 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 I'm um, really excited for it and uh, it's I think it's going to be like a type of movie that is nice. that is very big space but like art you know what I mean and I and I'm it's I'm really excited for it I can't really say too much about it mm -hmm. but it's just it's got it's it's got a lot of different levels to it. You know, you've been at this for such a long time, and I know the industry comes with so much ups and downs. So yes. keep it real. How do you go from the days when maybe you're not booking things, when things are not consistent? What did you just say? Booking things. <laughs> did oh, that sound weird? Like, <laughs> I thought that sounded like something else. <laughs> did you say what you just said? 
<laughs> that was oh okay. That oh. was weird. I thought you said that was bizarre. Okay. Oh my god. What would you think I said? I can't say that. <laughs> How deep you want to go on this answer? The deeper you want to take it, keeping it real for all our viewers, because there's so many people trying to make it in the industry. Some people are suffering. It's a in the different industry. game now. Right? It's a totally different game, and it's like. Um, I don't know. How can I say it? There's just say it. Well, no, I'm trying to formulate it in a in a way that yeah. is, is 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 digestible, but in a way that I'm not in awe of our business anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? When I came to Hollywood, I was completely mesmerized, and I was fascinated. And then when you start to see the machinations and the behind the scenes of it and you go, ooh, that's not what I thought it was or that's not what I thought it was. And then you see how some of it is not, you know, there's some dirty dealings and then that is like, oh man, that's not the one I thought it was. That's not what I thought. And now, there is so many, we are not, let me try to give you a simple answer, but with this thing. So I'm driving down, I did five shows the other night. Your comedy shows. Comedy shows. And I'm, I still have to check out. Okay, you can come anytime you want. And I'm very lucky, you know, I got to play the Ha Ha, which is in the valley, mm. and I went to the improv, and I went, and I ended up at the store. And it's on La Cienega in Santa Monica. And then I look to the left. And I see a huge billboard, and it says Kylie. I I drive by there all the time. <laughs> now look yes. how your eyes lit up with Kylie. Now stay yeah, with me. Yeah, look at that. Now look, look look what just happened right there. So Kylie, and it says a pop up, right? Yeah. And it says like pop up at the Grove, you know, August eighth through twelfth. And I thought, <laughs> first of all, the the Grove is going to be crazy because she's going to do a pop up for her makeup. Kylie Jenner. And then I looked at the hotel where L.A. Woman was wrote. So you know L.A. Woman, right? L.A. Woman. You know the doors? The song? Yes. L.A. It's one of the top right. in the echelon of rock and roll. It's an incredible song. It's insane. And it speaks to L.A. It speaks to many things. And then I have Kylie. And I thought Kylie is where we're at. And I'm fine with it. And if you can do Jim Morrison and, and show your talent, you better be able to promote it like Kylie. Branding that they have. Oh, yeah. Because we're in the genre of... I give over. I mean, this girl is 20 years old and is part and has made a billion dollar empire in two years. That is... <laughs> and God bless her. Yeah. God yeah. bless her. Family. She well no, I'm I'm I am in awe. I am in awe. If I see that family, I kneel down, I go teach me. Okay? And and because they're doing their own thing. And but also Jim Morrison writes LA Woman, that's his own thing. So all that goes back to where are we at in Hollywood. There are many avenues and there's many things that make up Hollywood now and it's not just singing, dancing, or acting. Mm -hmm. It's fashion, it's makeup, it's we're in, we just have to bring the attention to yourself mm -hmm. so people hear about you. And if they do, when they do, hopefully you'll have something to offer. Right. And I, and I, and, and I'm just learned from all of it, and I'm saying that, you know, I'm. I it was a great lesson of old meets new. We'll all go to carousel together and have some hummus. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> but you know, it's the power of social media, which mm -hmm. I want to ask you as well. How important is it to you? Are you the type where if you post something, it doesn't get enough likes, you delete it? Do you care about numbers? Are you? Do you think social media is king now with everything? I hate it. I understand it. I haven't been able to crack it. But you have a pretty good amount. I have a good amount, but like I want, but I, but but I also respect it. 
and I want to like I want the people. Look, at the end of the day, we're all just trying to curate our own right. groups, right? So we all want our own fans. We all want our own little thing. So you want people to follow you, and they who are fans of you. And then if you go to Sacramento and you do a show or you do an interview, you want people to know you and right. you know whatever help support your art. Right. So that's what I want to do with stand up or my movies or TV shows or whatever. Um, but I think when it's used properly and it's used in a way for that, and hey guys, we're like-minded. I really like, you know, gluten-free pizza, and here's my gluten-free pizza group, and are you, you know, share recipes or whatever. That's when it's great. Um, I think there's a lot of social media that's, there's a lot of yeah. bullshit on social media, and there's a lot of, you know, like, when people are trying to show how great their life is, that pisses it's me off. It's all fake. Well, it's just fake. It's all fake. It's fake. It's, yeah. it, it's really fake. And I don't want to go down the rabbit hole here, but, like, when some celebrities are like, yo, man, here's me in front of my jet. What are you promoting, bro? Like, that's bad for the environment. Just you on a jet. I flow on private jets. I, I fly southwest. You know, I've flown on private jets, but guess what? If it's one or two people on a private jet, that's bad for the environment. That's amazing for you because you're so humble and you get that, though. That's Listen, that's I the like... Of life, though, to post a picture with a jet. Well, no, I mean, people can do it and I understand and I'm not trying to hate. I'm just saying, yo, here's the other side of that. Right. There's a lot to that. But it's just like, I think for social media, in a perfect world, there's two types of celeb... I mean, there's multiple celebs, I'm, I'm sorry, but there's aspirational, mm -hmm. that people want to be like, and then there's relatable. And I'm probably more, I'm definitely some aspirational, but I'm probably more relatable. So, so if I'm on my yacht, you know, people will be like, what the fuck are you doing on your yacht? I don't have a yacht. But like, if I'm on the plane and I'm taking a picture from, from coach and I'm like, you know, got two people, people will probably laugh at that. <laughs> but it doesn't mean I don't have a good life, right. but it's just like, and I think that's where we're at. I know we went down the rabbit hole in this, but where we're at as a people is there's enough to go around. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're going to, I think that Hollywood has become more communal and it's gotten fragmented. And so I think that it's a totally different thing. And now I'm just part of it in the sense where you say I work on all the platforms because that's where it is. I want to. You're evolving with the time. Yeah, I got to go with the YouTube. I got to go, I got to work with the Instagram. Uh, I got to audition for, you know, right. the MySpace, you know, channel. And the name of your podcast. I just hate to break it to you. And where can everyone find you on social media? Oh, uh, you can find me. I hate to break it to you. It's on iTunes with Jamie Kennedy channel on YouTube, the Jamie Kennedy on Instagram, at Jamie Kennedy on Twitter, Jamie Kennedy on Facebook. Um, Snapchat is Yevra. I know that's weird. What? What is that? Yevra. It's my middle name backwards. Okay, Yevra. Harvey. Oh. Um, and uh, MySpace, I don't have it anymore. Okay, I don't think anyone has MySpace. It was the shit back in the day. I loved <laughs> That's it. That's the right OG <laughs> Facebook, right? Yes. Well, Jamie, this has been so much fun. Thank you. Thank you for sitting with me and talking Thank to you. me. Thank you. I hope we can do it again. I literally didn't shower. What? I know. But you that's okay. The gym. A lot of actors smell. <laughs>